flows dyes produce drop forgings weighing up to several tons. I didn't know anything about forging. Uh, I was coming out of engineering school. I was looking for a job in the, in the oil industry. I went to apply for a job at Cameron Ironworks where, where they were notable uh, in the supply of oil field uh, equipment. Come to find out I was actually applying for a job in their forge products division. And I think someone said, it gets in your blood, and once it gets in your blood, you just can't get away from it. My first interview with Scott Forge, which was with Jim McKinley, I came up, and this was the plant much, much smaller than it is today, and I was walking into the building, and six men were walking out of the building in our corporate tartan, which is the Buchanan, and that's a bright yellow and red and blue. It's this pen, okay? And um, I'm watching these guys walk out, and I'm going, whew, that must be the fleet salesman trying to sell them cars, until I came in with my interview with Jim, and I noticed the curtains were the same tartan, and Jim was wearing not that same exact jacket, but another tartan. And the only thing I thought of when I left was any company that could induce grown men to wear these <laughs> totally hideous outfits, and they all looked happy and like they were having a good time, there's more to it than meets the eye, and, and that was true. I don't remember the exact dates, but all the smaller forging companies were pretty much in the ODFI, Open Dye Forging Institute. And uh, people that really led us into the FIA was Bill and Chuck Finkel. They were, they were a great help to the smaller companies. I'm so old that I was around on, with the marketing committee in 1985 when it was decided by the board that the FIA needed to have a video. At the annual meeting in, in uh, Florida, in Naples in 1985, we showed the video. And, and part of the theme of that annual meeting was you know, the uh, sort of like the uh, opening of a, of a grand movie. We sold popcorn or gave out popcorn. And the video was uh, on VHS. That's how old it was. Back in, uh, I don't know if you remember the TV show Route 66 with George Maharis and Marty Milner, and it was back in the 60, early, early 60s, I'd say, and uh, they filmed three episodes in Cleveland, uh, and one of which was filmed at the Steel Improvement Forge Company. And during that uh, filming, my dad took me down one day to the to, to the uh, factory to see, you know, to watch the filming and, and meet the, the stars. And uh, so I was there, and uh, two, two funny stories came out of it. One, um, I went up to George Maharis and, and Marty Milner, and I said, um, gee, you know, I, and they drove around the country in a Corvette, as you recall. And he said, uh, they said, I went up to him and said, Gee, I walked all through the parking lot, and I'm really disappointed I didn't see your Corvette out there. And they go, yeah, it's out in the parking lot, kid. And I go, no, I said, there's no red Corvette out there. And they said, well, that's because it's blue. Remember, this was black and white TV. And the other part of the story was I got uh, aut my autograph book out, and I got George Maharis's autograph and Marty Milner's autograph and a couple of co-stars that were, were guest stars. And then there was this one young guy kind of standing off to the side with kind of reddish hair, you know, and he was going, you know, looking dejected because I hadn't asked him for his autograph. So I went up and I asked him, hey, can I have your autograph? Sure, kid. And he signs the book and I look at it. I don't know who he is. Put, close the book. About 20 years goes by and I find my autograph book. I open up to that page. Guess who it was? Robert Redford. My father was responsible. He became president of uh, FIA in 1958. He always believed that FIA was uh, something that was deeply important to have a group of companies band together to discuss how things could be done better to build a cohesiveness. We understand technical research a lot more right now. 
uh, where to go for technical research, how to bring people together. I thought the China trip was great. That was a wonderful thing to, to coordinate through the FIA. It was interesting on that trip to see the technologies that are used somewhere other than the U.S. You get a really good understanding of where you stand competitively uh, in a world market. While I was on the board, we did the, uh, we, we introduced uh, the concept of the FIA being not forging industry of the United States of America, but being forging industry of America. And we expanded the boundaries uh, from Canada through Mexico. Uh, I think it was a good idea. I, 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 it may be that we, in the future, will be able to expand it a little more. A lot of what I do through the FIA to be is as much sharing of what I know as, as well as learning from the people that I'm interacting with. So th those services that come, come from the, the, the headquarters and from the staff have been very, very beneficial to us. It's been a joy being with the FIA. I had a lot, met a lot of good people. And the sharing and the friendships that, uh, that have been made over the years are something that uh, are truly a treasure. Yeah. A lot of industries uh, don't interact, are highly competitive, uh, and, and we're all competitors, but, but we've been around for a long time. And the industry, the industry seems to be comprised of, of a lot of really, really great business people to be with that have a, have a common goal of, of making the forging industry a better place to do work and a better place to do business. The openness in this industry absolutely amazed me. All the time I came up, we were all friends. You could call anybody, get all kinds of help. And, you know, sometime if you'd have a breakdown on a piece of equipment, we'd even trade. They'd make some forgings for us. We'd make forgings for other people. Uh, Bill Tobin was the uh, president when I attended my first um, board meeting, but I just think about, um, you know, went from him to Dave Konstolansky for a couple of years, and then um, uh, to me, and then to Jim Link, and then to Don Larson, and then Tim Hunter, and then Rick Creed, and now Dennis. And if you participate, you get to interact with the caliber of gentlemen that I had just mentioned, and, and women. And that's, uh, that's no small part, especially given the fact that they're facing the same challenges you are, and the same industry you are. The FIA has now gotten to the point where we don't distinguish between ourselves as hot and cold we say that we're forgers. Thirty years ago, everyone was saying forging is a dying business. You better get out of forging because they won't need forgings anymore. We were somehow magically going to form the metal. There still will be forgings used in the world. Uh, they've been used since, as I said before, since uh, people were making swords and plowshares. Uh, they've been heating hot metal and, and forming it into uh, critical components, and I, I don't see that changing. We can't take it from one form and put it in another without heating and, and beating it. It'll be interesting to see over the next hundred years, do you see new technologies coming into play, creating an entry point for smaller, you know, more nimble, you know, new forging producers in the next hundred years. As I've talked about looking at the changes in this industry in the last 50 years. The changes have been, yeah, more presses, but we had presses 50 years ago. But more presses now, better making of dyes. But when you look at where is it going to go in the next 50 or 100 years? And I was trying to look and say, you know, what is going to be the replacement for the press? I'm still impressed that the little family-owned shops still have a place in the industry and continue to do what they have done over the years uh, and do it well. Craftsmanship is still in the industry. The craftsmanship of figuring out a problem to solve for the customer is still the engineering service trick. I think we're beginning to see it now where good young people are, are looking to come into our business, our industry again, and that's my prediction for the next hundred years.
I didn't know anything about forging. Uh, I was coming out of engineering school. I was looking for a job in the, in the oil industry. I went to apply for a job at Cameron Ironworks where, where they were notable uh, in the supply of oil field uh, equipment. Come to find out I was actually applying for a job in their forge products division and I think someone said it gets in your blood and once it gets in your blood you just can't get away from it. My first interview with Scott Forge, which was with Jim McKinley, I came up and this was the plant much, much smaller than it is today and I was walking into the building and six men were walking out of the building in our Using closed dies produce drop forgings weighing up to several tons. 